welcome everyone to another session on uh, this course on modeling and simulation of communication systems using matlab so we'll start with our first chapter that is uh, introduction to matlab so basically in this chapter we will talk about uh, what is matlab so first let me break down this word matlab stands for matrix and uh, in this chapter we'll basically discuss what is matlab uh, what are the data types so involved and then we'll talk about the control statements involved in matlab that is if and uh, the loops we'll talk about what are scripts and uh, finally we'll talk about uh, what are functions so matlab as i said is uh, an acronym for matrix laboratory so it was uh, developed to play with matrices and it's a very powerful tool for uh, simulating uh, systems and uh, possibly your institution has a copy of matlab if not there is something called gnu octave which is an open source this is open source so this is available for free matlab is paid software gnu octave is open source and so octave is open source and available for free and uh, in one possible lecture we will discuss the download and install of uh, octave matlab obviously is paid so i cannot uh, tell you how to install it you can simply install matlab or uh, i assume that you have matlab pre installed but i'll discuss the installation of octave in a future lecture then uh, we will discuss control statements i have stated and uh, loops functions scripts and we will also discuss the data types being used in matlab that uh, we will cover in the first topic itself so so we will use the desktop version of matlab i have it uh, open behind this slide so matlab is open here and this you can see is a matlab window so this is a matlab layout i will use this here i'll show you the window so basically i'm using windows 11 and it's showing the date of recording as well as the time of recording as well so anyway i'm using a pre release version of matlab release 2023a here and uh, you can obviously this will convert to a whenever 2023a is released i'll convert it to a regular version so this is the matlab window so in this lecture we'll basically discuss components of matlab the basic matlab layout so this is the matlab editor i like to keep the editor open here since i have a larger screen so i keep the editor open here and so this is the command window this command window is where you can type in all the commands and get instant results so please note that matlab is an interpreter so you might know the difference between an interpreter and a compiler that an interprets commands one by one and a compiler takes all the commands at once and uh, then compiles the entire file and then make creates an object file and creates an executable an interpreter on the other hand takes one command at a time converts it to something that the computer can understand and then gives you the result even if you write scripts so we'll come to scripts and functions later but uh, even if you give matlab a lot of commands at once to process matlab uh, will process them one at a time on the other hand traditional high level languages such as uh, c++ java c fortran basic these languages they compile your files they would take your file process it all at once and create an object file then create an executable and use that so that is how matlab is different and because of that we can give matlab live command so i can give matlab a command so this is clc is clear screen and so yes i was talking about the matlab layout so this is the matlab layout so i'll just close the editor and so this is a general matlab layout this is something that you will see on the first run and we'll work with this to begin with so this is called the ribbon this is the title bar the usual icons minimize restore close then you see new script new live script we'll touch upon scripts and live scripts in another session and uh, new script live script function class we'll touch upon most of these things this is an option to open files find files compare to files import data so we'll touch upon all of these as we go 
So, MATLAB has a very good plotting function. We will uh, look at plots using MATLAB as well. And these days, MATLAB has the option to install apps. So, there are additional functionalities like the curve fitting toolbox, the optimization toolbox that uh, you can install into MATLAB and uh, make them run over the basic MATLAB system. We won't touch upon that in that this course directly, but uh, these are useful capabilities that you can have and this I will expand. So, this is the current folder. So, after this, this is navigation bar. So, you can type in or you can know which folder you are working with over here. Also, obviously, you can uh, say possibly go to another place, say I can go to E drive and uh, I can go back. So, this navigation works uh, like it works in Windows, possibly if you are using Unix, it uh, might mimic that and you can also type in an address, you can go to any folder or subfolder over here out of these. So, then you have the current folder window. So, this displays all the files in the folder that you are currently working with. And uh, if you select a file, if it has comments, those comments will be displayed here. So, all those comments that uh, you have in a file. So, if you have a well commented code, its description will be displayed over here. Then this is the command window. This is where we enter commands for a MATLAB uh, or uh, for MATLAB to execute them. And this is called the workspace on the right hand side this contains all the variables that you are working with. So, I can use this command clear all to clear the workspace. So, workspace disappears. I can uh, obviously clear the variables one at a time. Again, we will come to that in a while. And uh, this was the MATLAB layout. And the first thing that you would want to be introduced in MATLAB or the first thing you can uh, work with in MATLAB are statements. So, basically, we are using MATLAB so that it can do our job for us or it can make our life easy. So, obviously, we want to tell it what to do. So, we tell what do we want MATLAB to do in the form of statements. So, each statement given to MATLAB tells it a specific task to perform and a statement can be one or more lines. I will show you that and uh, there are uh, the simplest form of statement is an assignment statement. It tells you that what value do I assign to a variable. So, to show that, let me write these statements down in the command window and you will see. So, I will open the MATLAB command window, clear it. So, I say that x equals 2, y equals 3. So, x equals 2 assigns x the value to. You can see that the variable x has now appeared in the workspace and uh, it shows uh, that x has a value 2. Similarly, and it also echoes or when I assign this value to x to 2, it says that x equals to it, the command window displays an output. If I do not want to display an output, I end the MATLAB statement with a semicolon and then the output will not be displayed. I, the prompt simply moves to the next line and you see that the variable y has moved to the third line. So, I also try out a multi-line statement. So, I want z equals x plus y. So, I do this and simply you see that z has been assigned a value x plus y. I want to display z, I simply say z and it says. Alternatively, what I could have done is and it uh, displays the value. Regarding multi line statements, I can say w equals x y, x multiplied by y and t equals x minus y and I put semicolons at the end of both of these statements to suppress their outputs. And uh, you see that uh, W and T have been uh, added to the workspace. So, what if I want the value of W to be displayed and the value of T to not be displayed? This, by the way, so I only display W, I do not display T. By the way, this uh, jump that uh, say G equals 1 plus 4 and I want uh, to go to the next line simply before without moving to the next line I or uh, without interpreting this I want to do something else with this. I simply use shift enter and I move to the next line say h equals 1 plus g and it gives me the value of h. So, I type a command, I type an assignment statement 
and press enter, it executes that command and moves to the next line. I type a command, I press shift enter, it goes to the next line or it starts the next line, but it does not execute the previous command. All those commands will be executed once you press enter the next time, fine. So that said, let me clear the screen. So this is another command. You can tell MATLAB to clear the command window, CLC, clear command window to clear the command window. And uh, then let us look at uh, some basic MATLAB commands. So there is the help command, say there is some functionality of MATLAB that I want to use, but I am not sure how to use that. So I can use uh, help for that. Say there is a basic function called sum. So I can say I want to add numbers. I will type help sum and MATLAB will give me a detailed documentation. So MATLAB documentation is very good. So is the sum of the number of elements of the vector x, if x is a matrix, s is a row vector with the sum, for sums all elements of x, sums along the dimension. Obviously this is an example, we will cover all of these topics in detail later. I was just showing you how the help command works. Obviously, there is a CLC command that clears the command window. Then you can clear individual variable names. So see clear H. So once I clear H, H disappears. Clear T, T disappears. Clear all. The entire workspace disappears. So this is the clear command. It might be helpful to know this. Then there is change directory. So those who are familiar with DOS, uh, might know that uh, there is uh, something called, so there are multiple folders within MATLAB. So let me use this command mkdir that is used to create a subfolder or a subdirectory within each directory and then use this cd command. So let me make directory example directory. So basically what this does is, it creates an example directory over here. So I want to change to this, I use cd and I go into the example directory. I want to create another directory here. So example 2 and I want to so now I want to go back to the previous folder or the previous directory directory I can obviously use the navigation toolbar over here to do that but uh, I can do it using command as well so I use cd double dot and it goes one level up I do cd double dot again, it goes another level up. So I get back to my main folder. I want to see what files are there in the current folder. So I use dir. So it lists all the folders. So, but I just want to say that uh, I want to know what MATLAB scripts are there. So MATLAB scripts end with the extension dot m. So I simply say dir star dot m. And uh, this gives me all the files, all the files that uh, end with m. I want to know what MATLAB data files are there. So I star dot mat and it will give me all the files that all the MATLAB data files that are there. Then there is the ls works the same. It lists all the files in the directory. So ls and dir are the same. You can obviously find cleverer ways to use this. Then there is the control C or terminate that uh, simply, so you suppose you get stuck in an infinite loop. You will know what an infinite loop is. So uh, in a while and uh, you want to break it. So you just simply press control C or control pause and the loop breaks. We will come to this when time is ripe. And then obviously there is the exit command that uh, exits MATLAB for the day. So MATLAB exits and uh, so we will talk about variables 
and uh, so a variable name is an identifier each identifier consists of letters digits and underscores so you can name a variable using letters digits and underscores the only catch is that a variable name cannot start with a number so a number or a digit can be a part of a variable name but a variable name cannot start with a number it is case sensitive obviously capital a and small a would denote uh, two different variables so this is a variable and uh, then we will talk about matlab data types all that uh, we should know right now is that like c and c++ matlab supports various data types integer floating point character and string we will go into the details of these data types in the next lecture so that was all for now thank you Thank you.